Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So as you can see behind me, the setup is different. I'm currently moved on to campus, but anyways, so this time we're going to be solving the leak code question, broken calculator. And in this question, we're going to be given a broken calculator and it's not working except for two operations. Now the two operations that we can perform are the double operation. And in this case, we multiply whatever number we have by two. So let's say the number is three, we did three into two, and that's what our result is going to be. And then we have the decrement operation and decrement just uh, decrements a number by one, meaning um, you subtract it by one, right? So if you have the number four, so it's going to end up being four minus one, three, pretty simple. So in this case, in the beginning, we're going to be given a number X. And what we want to do is we want to return the minimum number of operations needed to display the number Y. So let's just look at one example. In this case, the question is X is equal to two and Y is equal to three. So in this case, what he did is he did, uh, he did X into two, which is four, and then he subtracted one, giving us a value of three. And that's how you get from X to Y, just using these two operators. So this actually, uh, the first thing that I thought of is how to get from X to Y, which is exactly what the question is asking for. So keeping that in mind, the first approach I had is if X is equal to Y, we return zero, pretty obvious, right? But if X is greater than Y, what I thought of is double always increases your number and decrement always decreases it. So what I did is whenever X is greater than Y, I would only decrement the value. And that actually works, right? So when X is greater than Y, you just keep decrementing it until X is equal to Y. And that is exactly your answer. Now the problem comes with when X is less than Y. So to solve this, what I initially thought of is I'm gonna keep doubling the X number until I get to a value where the x is greater than the y. And when the x becomes greater than the y, I'm just going to keep decrementing it or decreasing it by 1 until x is equal to y, right? And that actually makes quite a lot of sense to me at least, but there's actually a pretty huge problem with that. And you can see this in example 2 over here. We have x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 8. So what actually ends up happening over here is using my method, you would do 5 into 2, giving you 10. And the reason we did into 2 is because x is less than y. So now we're going to stop because uh, x now is 10 and 10 is greater than y. So we stop, right? We don't do anything. Now, since x is greater than y, we're going to keep decreasing it until x is equal to y. So 10 minus 1, 9. That's one operation. And then 9 minus 1, 8. So the total operations we did is we first um, multiplied it by 2. Then we decremented it two times. So that's a total of three operations. But another way to actually do this, and remember, we want the minimum number of operations needed. So in this case, another way to do it would just be, well, 5 minus 1, 4, 4 into 2, 8, and done. You got your answer. So this is also one thing that you do want to consider. And let's just see what is some other way to look at this question in order to consider such a condition. So the other way is, well, you just look at it oppositely. So what you do is instead of seeing how can I get from x to y, you look at how can I get from y to x. For example, what I mean by that is, in this case, getting from x to y, let me just make up an operator. Uh, remember, you can just double and decrement, and I'm just going to add an, operament, uh, sorry, an operation called plus 1. So in this case, I could just do x plus 1, giving me 3, right? Uh, but now the question is, how do I get from y to x? And doing that would just be the exact opposite of what I did for getting from x to y. So for x to y, I did plus 1. So from y to x, I'm going to do minus 1, and then I get from y to x, right? You just do the exact opposite. What that means in this case is instead of doubling, you would divide, and instead of decrementing, you would increment. So this actually ends up working. And the reason for that is if you just keep greedily uh, dividing by two, you actually end up getting the answer. But doing the opposite, which is multiplying it by two, did not give us the answer. So what essentially I mean by that is, in this case, x is, sorry, let's just look at the same example, right? x is equal to five, y is equal to eight. In the first example, we did x into 2, minus 1, minus 1, 3 steps. Now in this method, we're first going to see how can we get from y to x. So to do that, in this case, y is the greater number. So we're going to do y divided by 2. In this case, giving us 4, right? One step, we got to 4. Now in this case, we're going to do y divided by 2 again, but that will give us 2. That's too low, right? Why are we going smaller than the x value? So in this case, whenever the y value is less than the x value, we're going to increment it by 1. We're doing the exact opposite. Instead of doubling, dividing by 2, decrementing, incrementing. That's it. So in this case, y divided by 2, 4. Now 4 is less than x. So now we're going to increment it until we get to x. And that's just going to be plus 1. And that took a total of 2 steps, giving us the correct answer. 
So in this case, let's look at the same thing. And over here, that would be uh, the problem is y is actually an odd number over here. So when we have an odd number such as 3 or any odd number, right? Uh, what you would actually end up doing is you would add 1 to it. You would increment. So in this case, you would increment y and y would now become 4. And then you divide it by 2. So that would give us a output of 2, a total of 2 steps, right? So hopefully you are understanding how we're doing this. We're essentially just looking at the opposite. Instead of get seeing how we can get from x to y, we're looking at how we can get from y to x. Since we can simply put this inside of some sort of looping condition and uh, directly find the answer out of that. So now all we have left to do is we want to see what the code of this actually looks like. And we're going to be using uh, Python and then Java for that. All right, so we'll start out by initializing our result, and this is what we're going to end up outputting, uh, or one of the things we're going to end up outputting, and let's just call it zero, right? And the reason we're starting off with zero is because x could be equal to y, and in that case, well, you just output zero. Now, that's one condition, right? Like I said, x could be equal to y, and in that case, we return zero. And another condition is going to be when the y value here is going to be less than the x value over here. Okay, so why, why exactly, uh, and how, okay, so how exactly do we deal with this condition? So remember, we're trying to get from y to x uh, in this condition that we're looking at. And in this case, if y is smaller, it's pretty simple. We just need to increase the value, right? And in this case, since we just need to increase the value, we just need to increment it some amount of times. Uh, and if this is a little bit confusing, going back to what the question is exactly asking for, if x is greater than y, right? And in that condition, we just need to decrement x some amount of times. And that works perfectly well. And to get this, it's essentially the difference between y and x. And because that is the number of times you're going to increment or decrement it, okay? So that's pretty simple. And we can just find that with the difference. And in this case, that difference is just going to be x minus y. And the reason it's x minus y is because x is the greater number in this condition, since we're doing the incrementing and not decrementing. And finally, the last condition, and this is the condition that we're really actually considering, is when y is greater than x. And for this condition, we need to have a while loop, okay? So we define our result in first, uh, in the beginning, and let's have a while condition for when y is greater than x. Perfect. So what exactly are we going to be doing over here? Now, each time we enter the while condition, we're going to kind of think of it as performing one operator. And when we're performing the operator, we're going to be increasing our result by one, since we're performing one extra operator, right? So that's why res plus equals one each time. Now, what is the steps that we talked about? Well, it's pretty simple. The first thing is, is our number even? So if y mod 2 is equal to 0, that means the number is even. And when it is even, we're going to just divide the y value by 2. So y divided equal to 2. Now, if it is not even, then in that case, we need to increment it by 1. So y plus equal 1. Perfect, right? And now, all we have left to do is we need to return the values. The first thing we're going to return is the result, right? So res, and what exactly are we going to also return? So in this case, what we're actually doing is we're only making sure uh, at the ending of this y loop that the x value is going to be greater than the y value. And that actually makes it really simple for us because once the x value is greater than the y value, all, the, all that is left for us to do is find the difference between y and x to tell us how many times we need to increment it, right? So we can just do that directly over here. So we can just do result plus x minus y. And if this is a little bit confusing, getting this is the exact same as doing a while loop. So while y is not equal to x, and each time we, we, we would increment the y by 1, right? So it's the exact same thing. And instead, we're just doing it a lot faster by finding the difference. So this should be it for the solution. And now we'll see the same thing in Java. And one small addition, so uh, this actually ended up outputting the floating point value. So I'm just converting it into an integer at the very end. All right, so that's it. All right, so this is going to be the exact same thing in uh, Java as well. So I'm not actually going to be going over the explanation completely. So I'll just kind of show through the code and I'll talk over it. So we're going to define a result variable uh, starting off at zero. And we're starting it off at zero because there might be a condition where y is equal to x. And in that case, we don't perform any operators. Now, another condition is when the x value is greater than the y value. And when such a condition is there, we just increment the uh, y value some amount of times since x is greater than y. And the amount of times we incremented it is just the difference between x and y, right? So we can find that part uh, pretty easily as well. Now, the only condition which we need to kind of... Uh, uh, consider a little more explicitly is when y is greater than x. So to do this, we're actually going to go inside of a while statement. 
while y is greater than x. And what exactly are we going to do over here? Now, the first thing is each time the result is going to be incremented by 1 since we're doing one more operator each time we enter the y loop. And the condition we're going to have here is if uh, the y value over here is divisible by 2, the same conditions that we talked about earlier. And the re uh, sorry, the way we know that is if y, where is mod? Uh, y mod 2 is equal to 0, then in this condition, we're going to divide it by 2. So y divide equal 2. Perfect. Now, if this is not the case, that means it is not divisible, or sorry, it's not divisible by 2, it's not even. And in that case, we're going to increment y by 1. All right, so, uh, or we could just do y plus plus, right? So in this case, uh, this is all we're doing. And what actually ends up happening is at the ending of this, the y value is going to either be equal to x, and if that's the case, we just return it as it is, but there might be a condition where the y value over here is greater than x. Sorry, uh, is less than x. So that means x is greater than y. And in that condition, we need to increase the y value by some sort of amount. And this amount, like I said earlier, is nothing else but the difference between y and x, right? So keeping that in mind, what we're going to end up returning is going to be the result that we actually have and the difference between the y and x for the incrementation or for the conditions where y is less than x. And that's just going to be x minus y, and that should be it for this solution in Java.